it started operations in, in 2005 as a way to show the world that there's tremendous talent here at MSU in terms of how to solve challenging problems using some of the most sophisticated computers out there. My first day of work at the High Performance Computing Center, uh, I show up and it's just an empty room. The next day, the computers arrived and it was, this was green. Compared to traditional desktops or clusters at the time, where you had one or two processors available, this one had 64 processors all in, uh, in one single system image and that looked like a single computer. At the time, I was working on my graduate studies in face recognition. I had taken over all of the computers in the computer science department's uh, computer labs and had been running my analysis there. I was promptly told by the computer science department to uh, stop doing that and they recommended I use the High Performance Computing Center. And I kind of took the system down by mistake. Uh, I got called into Andy Keene's office at the time. Uh, he sat me down and he told me not to do that. But as it ended up, he also uh, was excited that my research could actually utilize the system that MSU had built. He brought me back a couple of times later to kind of be the benchmark person to test out the systems as they made improvements. So we started using HPCC from its inception. That was probably 2005 and uh, we've been using it ever since. If we have a huge database, say 100 million faces, and we want to study some characteristics of these faces, can we group these faces in terms of their similarity? We were using three-dimensional models back in uh, 2004, 2005, and those models were taking forever. We just cannot work on the machines which we have in our lab. We were uh, getting really frustrated with those uh, PC-based machines. HPCC allows us to use their big cluster consisting of 200 nodes, and that facilitates our getting the results in a timely manner. The only reason I can say the paper got published is because we were able to run the job within the deadline given to us by the editor. Without HPCC, again, we wouldn't have published that paper. We are very happy that we can rely on this facility and, and get the services we need. HPCC rocks! So in the early days when high performance computing came up, they bought this big computer, everybody was really happy, and they said, here's your lovely computer, go for it. And people just sort of said, uh, how do we do that? We don't really know, and so it took a while for us to sort of develop a, a rapport with people on campus. There's really sort of maybe three groups of people. The first are, are very expert at computation and really didn't need much help. There were some middle folks that sort of knew what they wanted to do and needed just a little help, and then there was pretty much everybody else who had no idea. So when I say that I thought the key word for high performance computing was helpful, that was always my goal, to make sure that we as a center gave help to our users so that they could effectively use the resource. In May 23rd, 2006, I began using uh, the HPCC. It does permit a level of uh, computing that's intermediate between what you can do in a department and what can be done on a national laboratory scale computing. So it's extremely useful. So I started to use HPCC in 2006. I became very interested in the role that GPU computing could play in solving problems that I couldn't tackle before. I think HPCC represents a key component of science going forwards. And I think um, it represents an environment where uh, people who are really interested in solving big problems come together with people who are doing new algorithms. My user experience with HPCC has been fantastic. In 2007, we announced the arrival of our Intel 07 cluster, originally named Brody. With 1,024 cores, this effectively doubled our capacity, allowing our users to run a wider array of jobs. In 2007, we just 
received a grant from NASA and we wanted to look at the changes in the Amazon. And I was working with my colleague, Bob Walker, who's a, an a old hand at the Amazon. And he said, he said, really the farm sizes are quite small, they're just a few kilometers. Can your model resolve down to one kilometer? And I thought, are you kidding me? That would be, you know, several hundred million points, no. He said, what about 20? And I thought, there's no way. There's no computer out there that can handle that. But I went to the HPCC and lo and behold, they said, yeah, I think we can do it. Modern science is changing dramatically. The old idea was that there needs to be a balance between theory and experiment. But now we have a third layer, theory, experiment, and computation. And this is really transforming the way we're able to look at the world. My research group and I have been using the HPCC uh, since I arrived at MSU in 2008 and we've been very active users of it since then. Well, one of the interesting projects that we've done with the HPCC is actually use it to model um, how the earliest galaxies in the universe formed. And so we um, used uh, quite a bit of supercomputing time on the supercomputer here to study uh, lots and lots of different galaxies and how they went from essentially being a completely uniform, homogeneous universe to forming the first stars in the universe to forming galaxies that were big enough that you could actually see with the Hubble Space Telescope. HPCC Center was founded in 2005 and then people quickly realized that it's nice to have a high performance computing center but to impact a broad number of people on campus you needed to have more support and more training. So we put together uh, a large committee from uh, all parts of the university where we uh, tried to figure out what does the university need to do uh, to enable us to lead the country and the world in computational science. We tried to have something cool looking, but it's cooler than ice, probably nothing, so we settled on Institute for Cyber Enabled Research, ICER. So we really have, uh, as I see it, a threefold mission, hardware, training and then supportive uh, computational science researchers at Michigan State University. Everybody has certain levels of uh, comfort with computational techniques and ISA was set up not just to provide the hardware uh, but also the peopleware to enable people to reach that next rung uh, up the ladder of competencies. In 2009 ISA introduced the AMD09 cluster. It replaced uh, the effective capacity of green. It had the equivalent power of a thousand iPhones, like a thousand of today's iPhones. And uh, it really enabled some exciting new science on MSU's campus. And it really, really helped people scale their science much easier than the old SMP system allowed them to. In 2010, we installed our largest single cluster to date, officially dubbed the Intel 10 cluster. Coming in at just over 1,500 cores, which doubled our capacity, this 188 node cluster allowed our users to both run larger scale jobs and spend less time waiting in the queue. With the introduction of the Intel 10 cluster, Central Michigan University became the first institution to invest in the MSU HPCC, establishing ICER as a regional institution for scientific computing. CMU is not quite as big as some of the other places, so you know, it's critical for us to have access to those things. Um, so when we write proposals, it's critical that we sort of indicate that we have very intimate access to these excellent resources. You can usually get a response you know, the same day, well, you know, a question, it's fixed the same day. In 2012, ICER and the HPCC partnered with IT Services to provide a high-throughput cluster based on HT Condor. This framework utilizes idle workstations in labs all across campus to process extra work. An idle workstation will contact the HPCC and ask to be handed a job, thus enabling us to further scientific research while not wasting extra computing cycles.
In 2013, I became a user of the HBCC here at MSU, and I've been uh, you know, using it basically ever since. Recently, uh, we were writing an NSF grant to um, get you know, more resources and personnel into the lab, uh, and so I had a bunch of data that needed to get analyzed really quickly and we were running out of time, we were approaching the deadline, so I emailed Dirk kind of in a panic, and he and a few folks from ISER were able to kind of help us get the jobs running a lot faster. Um, they actually, you know, were able to shift around some job priorities and things like that, so that way we could get running a little bit more smoothly and make our grant deadline, so that was really awesome. Um, and that's just another example of the many hundreds of times I've emailed Dirk in a panic asking for, you know, this or that. So um, they've been really, really great about responding to those sorts of things. So that was a big sell point from MSU, absolutely, that it's something that recruits me and other, other new faculty here for sure. Um, being able to do this big data type analysis um, is, is the way of the future. And so in, in order to, to do that, you need good you know, hardware, but you also need the, the people to help you utilize that. I mean, I'm a biologist and not a computer scientist, so that's something we need a lot of help with in our group, and, and we get it. That's part of the reason I, I, I mean, come here, because there's a facility here. In other universities, sometimes uh, the researchers has to have their own supercomputer, like build their own supercomputers. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think that's the best usage of my time. HBCC also provide uh, uh, like um, storage support, um, so we can really kind of uh, feel safe to leave our data here, knowing they're backed up. I learn a lot from people here. Like uh, Ben, he just get things done very fast. I said, like, "Where's code?" And then he like, down, compiled. It's, yeah. Two thousand fourteen is an important year for ICER. As the director of the ICER business team, I am very fortunate to work alongside some amazing talent. Talent that is going to continue to make ICER an even more amazing place. My name is Nicole Springer, and I was the first to join the ICER business and communication team, led by Kelly Osborne. In 2014, we added three more talented members to our team. Together, we are so excited to be a part of this amazing time of growth at ICER. We have so much more to look forward to. In early 2014, the ICER business team started to provide a very unique service. We now create research highlights videos for our HPCC users. We believe that an audio-visual approach helps users to promote their groundbreaking research while at the same time making science known and understood by more people. In 2014, ICER supported the formation of a bioinformatics support core called BICEP. To do bioinformatics analysis, you need three things. You need computers, you need expertise, and you need data. We have computers, we have expertise, and the researchers on campus have data. The idea is to, again, help perform research as well and as quickly as possible. In 2014, I joined the team at ICER as the new training director. Training is the third leg of ICER's support for computational researchers across campus. The good thing about ICER training is that you don't have to take a semester-long course. We can accommodate you through online training and on our ICER YouTube page, as well as in-person workshops and domain-specific computational training across campus. Come check us out. I joined ICER in 2014 as a research specialist. As a research specialist, I'm helping MSU researchers who work with advanced computational tools, including software development and optimization, to make researchers obtain their results much faster. ICER established partnerships with two additional institutions in 2014, Kettering University and the United States Department of Agriculture, expanding the use of the HPCC to researchers across the state and their collaborators across the world. Intel 14 was delivered and installed in January 2014 during one of the largest and coldest snowstorms that East Lansing has ever experienced. Thankfully, installation went without a hitch. In addition to MSU researchers, Intel 14 supports other universities as well as government research labs. Intel 14 is a powerful machine capable of over 200 trillion operations per second. It is approximately eight times faster than the entire cluster that was installed before 2014, and it's about 250 times faster than the first system installed that was green.
The future of HPCC is really exciting here at MSU. The next cluster will be installed early 2016. It will more than double or even quadruple our current compute capacity. I really think that this next generation of compute power will transform how we do research here at Michigan State. Something like 60% of the hires between the College of Engineering and the College of Natural Science are going to be compute intensive type hires. People who are, as part of their research, are going to really use computation as an intrinsic part of their work. The role of computation in research is only going to increase. One of the main drivers is um, better and cheaper sensors, and I use that word sensor in a very broad sense. So the, the ability to sequence uh, genomes, that's a kind of sensor we can look in at people's DNA. Um, little cheap web cameras that you could mount on a drone, you could mount on a robot, you could mount on the side of a building. Those are all capturing enormous amounts of data. Um, better and better satellite observatories, things like that which look out at the universe. All of those things capture just tremendous amounts of data and there's no way to extract knowledge or scientific meaning from those data without huge computational power. And I think that's the trend that people are dealing with. So computational resources are never enough. Current iPhone, you know, has more computational resources than all of the computers that were used in the moonshot of the Apollo program. You always need to uh, refresh your computational resources, um, otherwise the rest of the world leaves you behind. Absolutely, ICER should and wants to support a diverse uh, array of computational sciences. So we want to support bioinformatics, we want to support digital humanities, we want to support business analytics, we want to support computational chemistry, computational biology, uh, material science and engineering. We want to support all these groups uh, through uh, developing staff at ICER, both support staff and training staff where we can support a broad range of research interests. And I think the future is very exciting for uh, the computational sciences in Michigan State. I think we're going to really make a difference in the world. Now, as we think about the work of ICER moving forward, the investment that was made in high-performance computing, it really is about not only what we do today, but about the future and having Michigan State University be at the forefront of technology in ways that our faculty members across the campus have the tools that they need to really understand very complex problems as rapidly as anyone in the world, but at the same time to be able to think about those problems in a very interdisciplinary way with support from uh, the High Performance Computing Center, ICER, in ways that they have people around them who not only understand a bit of what their work is, but understand the power of the technology. And by putting together those interdisciplinary teams, not only do we get better results for a single project, but new ideas emerge for new kinds of research, new problems, because people from across the campus are working together with the great staff in ICER to think about the blending of problems and technology for great solutions. Happy birthday, HPCC. 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 I want to wish HPCC a happy birthday. Happy 10th birthday, HPCC. Happy birthday, HPCC. Happy birthday, HPCC. Happy birthday, HPCC. And it's also fun to think about when I'm a retiree sort of wandering along the banks of the Red Cedar, what will be the next generation of this uh, support for our faculty, our staff, and our students in ways that permit uh, even greater things to happen at Michigan State. <laughs>